just share with you a scripture that has been a foundational scripture in my life. And this is from Romans chapter 12. It's verse one and two. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Have you ever asked God what his will is? Have you ever just, I know I have, I've had moments where I'm just like, God, what should I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do you want me to do? This scripture is, is something that has taught me how to know the will of God. And so we have to go back to the beginning of the scripture. It says, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy. So first we have to view something. What are we viewing? We're viewing the mercy of God. And as we look and we see the immense, immeasurable, amazing mercy that God has had on us as human beings, as fallen sinful humans, that he sent his son to the earth as a human. And he took on the sin of the world. He took on the darkness and he put it upon himself. He was perfect. He was sinless. There was nothing, nothing of darkness, nothing of sin in his life at all. He was the perfect spotless lamb of God. And he came and took on all of that. I just want to say like junk, right? All of the junk, the darkness, the sickness, all of the evil. He took it on himself, he took it away from us and laid down his life, died on the cross and then was raised to life in power and glory. Now we have the ability to know God. And without that, we would not have that. We would be separated from God. This is the mercy that this is talking about in view of God's mercy on you, on me, on humanity. And then I think about in view of that, what should our response be? How should we respond to viewing this mercy? It says in that scripture, it says in view of God's mercy, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And I think what God has done in my life, as I see the amazing, powerful goodness of God, it makes me want to offer my life to him out of that mercy, out of the, the view and the understanding of what he has done for me. I want to lay down my life for him. And then it goes on. This is our true and proper worship. What is our true and proper worship? The next sentence says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The power of God and the Holy Spirit has been given to us to be transformed, not to conform. When we conform to the patterns of this world, we then cannot know the good, pleasing, perfect will of God. We know the will of the world. We know the will of Jill or the will of whoever. But when we allow our lives to be conformed to the Holy Spirit and transformed by the renewing of our minds, it says, then I'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. So if you want to know what the will of God is, we have to lay our lives at his feet. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to transform our mind, step away from the pattern of conforming to this world, step away from that, look to God, allow him to transform your mind, and then you will know his good and pleasing and perfect will.